Indeed, if you would be seated, if you would open your hearts, your minds, allow the Holy Spirit to bless you this morning, and allow the Word of God to resonate in your heart. Let us pray. Almighty, holy, and sovereign one, thank you for this day. We truly believe it is the day that our God has made, called us to rejoice and to be glad in it. And in that rejoicing and in that gladness, O oh God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be present, to touch us, to open us, to remind us, to compel us, to lead us in the ways of goodness and righteousness, to convict us, to bless us. All of these things, O oh God, we pray that you would make real in this act of worship and in this act of worship, God, help us to be ambassadors in your world so that this earth might be more like your heaven. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, that the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I get to preach this morning, I do want to say a big thank you to uh, the staff and to the volunteers here at this congregation who made it possible for me to spend a week with my family in Puerto Vallarta last week and to evangelize and to preach the good news of Jesus to all that I came in contact with. <laughs> thank you, Reverend Aaron, for a great sermon last week. It really was a joy, an opportunity for us to just to get away and to relax and to enjoy. And I, I really want to tell you, it was in all great seriousness, I had the great opportunity to be able to witness about Cathedral of Hope and to share the good news of what's going on here in Dallas, Texas, uh, with a whole group of people. Uh, one young man who had just returned to Mexico from Chicago, he and his partner had just broken up. And we were uh, talking. He was actually a salesperson. They were trying to sell me a timeshare in Mexico. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And we spent uh, over an hour talking about his relationship with God and about how God loves him just the way that he is. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And then there was another opportunity as I was uh, laid out by the pool, as you do. I may have had a beverage or two found myself surrounded by four really, really good-looking women. Donna and Sylvia were very jealous. <laughs> and those four women who had uh, been on, were on vacation the first time without their husbands and without their children, I don't know if they were hitting on me, but we were having a great conversation. <laughs> uh, they were uh, from Milwaukee. Uh, and uh, as we conversed and con had a conversation together, uh, they had said that they were struggling to find a church. They were struggling to find a place where they could place their spiritual, their spiritual home. And all of these were uh, teachers, and uh, of course they were on spring, uh, summer break, and so um, uh, one of the teachers was a science teacher, and she was saying that she was struggling because in the town where she lives, uh, many of them were saying that you can't have uh, Christianity and science together. And uh, I told her that our new t-shirt at Cathedral of Hope said, we believe in Adam and Eve. <laughs> and she was so excited, so excited. And so I think they might be watching online this morning. So I want to say, we believe in Adam and Eve. And I'm going to get one of those t-shirts sent off to you uh, as quickly as possible. God is good all the time. God is good. It's, it's, it's what we affirm here at Cathedral of Hope. We have affirm this sense that God's goodness lives within each and every one of us and that our compelling story is to display that good work to the world. The compelling story of Jesus' life and ministry was to display God's grace and wonder and awesomeness to the world, to reconnect people with their spirituality to reconnect people with this hope and this future and this desire to know that God is present and that God affirms human life in all of its diversity, that God has made a way when perhaps there was no way, that God has made a way for each and every one of us to have our relationship with God made real here on earth as it is in heaven. 
It is that sense of good news that Jesus came to reveal in a time when perhaps the generation had lost the sense and wonder of what it means to have good news embodied in their lives. In our Scripture reading this day, we read of how Jesus was in the synagogue, the temple that day. And as was the custom, they would read from the, the sacred text from the Torah. Then it says that they opened the scroll, and there was the words from the prophet Isaiah, words that had been said perhaps many, many times in the liturgical calendar of the Jewish synagogues. And they opened the scroll, and it says that Jesus found the words from the prophet Isaiah. Now, let's, let's just remember that these were not coincidences. The scroll in the temple was not like our Bibles today, neatly bound. The, the scrolls in the temple were on parchment. They were on Scriptures, and they were uh, laid out and rolled out so that the Scriptures could be found. And Jesus found the words from the prophet Isaiah. And it says that as Jesus read them, I've come to bring you good news for the Spirit of the Sovereign God is upon me. I've come to bring you good news for all of the nations, that the oppressed might be set free, that those who perhaps believe that they weren't worthy would find a God. I'm paraphrasing, but, but the sense of that good news, Jesus echoed through the generations and echoes down through the generations to meet us this day. I've come to bring you good news that would set you free. Those words, it says, Jesus said, were fulfilled in their hearing. Isaiah had prophesied about a time when there would be a, no more separation of the peoples. There would be no more separation in the ways that perhaps they had experienced until that day. And Jesus prophesied those words again to a future generation as well as to this generation. The Spirit of the Sovereign God is upon us to bring good news. I wish every preacher would hear that word this morning, that the Spirit of the Sovereign God has come to bring good news. Good news that would liberate God's people. Good news that would set people free. Good news that would mean that you would leave the experience of worship feeling better about yourself than when you first came in. Good news, Jesus said. And yet we spend so much time in our churches, in our pulpits, telling people bad news, telling people why they should come to church out of a sense of guilt, out of a sense of duty, out of a sense of a God is going to get you if you don't come to church. Well, perhaps God might get you if you don't come to church. But this sense of good news, meaning that we should be inspired to go back out into the world and to find ways to make that good news real in our world. I wish Jeff Sessions would open the scroll this day and see that God had come to bring good news and to welcome the children home amongst us and not to separate families out anymore. for some of us to get our Bibles open and to find good news, good news, a good news that we needed to hear, a good news when we as a people and as a nation have separated one another out in, 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 in times of, of color and race. Perhaps our country needs to hear good news of Jesus who came to set the oppressed free instead of making black bodies oppressed in our country this day. Oh, come on, people of God, hear the good news. This is Juneteenth, a reminder of the way in which Texas took at least another two years to hear that freedom was given to the slaves in America. It's not unusual that we should be late on the uptake. <laughs> but we're still late on the uptake. It may have been resolved by law all those years ago, but until we start winning over the hearts and minds of the average American in this country, there will be no good news. There will be no be setting a free of the oppressed and the minorities. 
Until we hear the words from the prophet Isaiah, I've come to bring you good news that will set people free. Why do we bind people up all the time? Why do we trip people up all the time? And God said, I've come to bring good news. I'm going to tell you, if you have felt freedom in your life this day, we have to set other people free. We can't use our freedom to bind people up. We are called to set people free and to allow people to find the fullest of who they are as human beings, as those who are created in God's image. And when the church fails to preach that word, it is not preaching Jesus. It is preaching something about their own power and control that will determine how God is seen in the world today. When I sat with those individuals in Puerto Villata, I love being able to say that, <laughs> they didn't feel much freedom. They didn't feel freedom to come and worship in church. They didn't even feel that God was really about good news. They'd heard the rhetoric and the toxic Christianity that we have in our country this day. And they'd only heard of a God who wants to judge us and who, uh, who wants to discriminate against individuals. They needed to hear good news. They needed to hear that their lives meant something. And their experience of God would set them free, not so that they might take that freedom and oppress others, but so that they might find that freedom and then go about the good work of setting other people free. Perhaps setting some of those children free from the cages that they have been placed in. It, it, it boggles my mind that the Christian church has not been marching all the way down to Galveston uh, to the borders of America and, and Texas and, and, and uh, Mexico, and that we're not laying our lives on the line for these children. Has the church become that cold and that discriminatory and that unconcerned with the rights and dignities and the freedom of the oppressed? Have we got that cold and negligent of what God has called us to do? Have we become that cold that we have forgotten that we are called to be people of transformation? I was heartened this week that even the Southern Baptist Convention that was meeting downtown, even the Southern Baptist Convention spoke out against what's happening on our borders heartened because so often our churches are just silent. Reverend Todd Atkins Whitley was on the border this week. He was with those children this week. And in a couple of weeks' time, he's going to be sharing with us about his experience and how Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ might get involved to set people free, to bring good news, to fulfill the words of the prophet Isaiah who says, I've come to set people free. Cathedral of Hope, we've been used to setting people free. We've been about working to ensure that the LGBTQ community are set free, but we can't stop there. We are called to continue to march all the way until freedom rings, until freedom is for all of God's people. I honor those who are amongst us this morning who have been in the march with us, who are our allies, and who continue to stand with us as Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. Would you give all my straight folks in this congregation a round of applause this morning? You know, one of the reasons why I think there are so many straight people amongst us is because they've heard the march for freedom and for good news, and that they want to be around a people who have struggled in that struggle for decades. And we face a time in our country right at this moment where rights are being taken away and clocks are being turned back and Cathedral of Hope, we can't just sit idly by and, and ignore what's going on in our world. Now, I know some of you might be saying, oh, he's dabbling in politics again. We, you know, perhaps we need to hear it. Yeah, he's dabbling in politics. I'm not dabbling in politics. No more than Jesus did. No more than Jesus did. You, 
You, you don't think that when Jesus sat down after reading the prophet Isaiah that they had heard all those generations for generations and generations that when he sat down all the eyes were on him because they knew that they had meddled with the politics, the politics of religion, the politics of slavery, the politics of oppression. And Jesus said, today in your hearing, this Scripture has been fulfilled. He could just as well echo the words of Maya Angelou and sat down and said, girl, today I rise. I rise. Today I rise. Jesus speaks those words to us and says, Cathedral of Hope, are you about to rise? Or are you going to remain comfortable in your nice green pews? Are you going to remain, or green chairs? Are you going to remain comfortable in the religion that you have been sold all of your life? Or are you going to hear Jesus say, today it is fulfilled in your hearing when you rise? when you stand up for what you believe in, when you make the phone calls, when you march, and when you allow your bodies to be following Jesus. Juneteenth, Father's Day, a celebration throughout this entire month of what we are called to be as church. Today we rise. Today we stir our bodies from our faith, and we rise. If the prophet Isaiah is to be fulfilled in our hearing today, we can no longer be silent. We must rise and resist and allow this world to become more like God's heaven, where not just Christians are welcomed, but all people are welcomed. The immigrant is welcomed. The undocumented is welcomed. And we call upon our world to find ways in which we might echo the words of Isaiah and Jesus and Saint Maya Angelou and others who have been the struggle for years and who say, today I rise. Today, this is fulfilled in your hearing. If you remain silent, it is not. Today, we rise. May Cathedral of Hope, in all of its diversity, continue to speak the words that will change the world. And may we speak freedom to God's people. Together, we rise. Hallelujah. And amen. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ.